So quite a quite a long debate in Tinwald last week. Um, what did you make of what was said? I mean, there, there were plus points. There was a lot of praise for staff within the healthcare services, but there was also criticism. What did you make of the debate? I think it was a very well-rounded debate, to be perfectly honest. I think it was very good the way members engaged with the debate. I tried during my speech to get as much facts and figures out there so people could see not just because we were talking about the overspend, but also the positive news stories of the department, how we're using digital technology more um, to change the way that we work and operate, and also to try and get members to understand the breadth of services that the department delivers day on day and day out. As you say, quite rightly, there was a lot of praise for the staff, and I don't think we should ever underestimate the amount of hard work that the frontline staff put into the services that they deliver to us on a daily basis. You mentioned digital there. Within the Cabinet Office in your previous role, you you were heavily involved in the digital strategy. To what degree are you going to be rolling that out in health? I think the digital strategy is absolutely essential to health. We're already seeing the digital strategy giving massive improvements. Let's take, for instance, the digitisation of patient records, that once it is completed, we'll have digitised over 100,000 patient records and got rid of 16 million pieces of paper from out of the health service. Now, that figure is absolutely staggering when you think that was the amount of paper that was hanging around and being moved every time someone needed to be treated. It will save time and it will save money and I think the future use of technology across the health service is the way to go and it also improves patient safety as well because there's less chance of things getting lost or going missing. We often hear uh, criticism of the amount of administration there is in government and particularly in the health services. Um, is, is there an argument for saying there does need to be a certain amount of administration because of the checks and balances, because it's so important? Well, obviously, you're never going to get rid of all administration. You're, you know, there is checks and balances, obviously, more importantly in health than any other area, perhaps, that the department covers. But I think certainly in terms of health, you've got to have that paper trail. When you're prescribing things, when you're dealing with patient safety, you can't compromise on that. And I made clear in my overspend speech that although the department will be looking for efficiencies and will be looking for savings, they cannot and must not compromise patient safety. Now this review of the department that was approved in Tidmore, um this month, um, this year marks the 70th birthday of the NHS. Could this be the final year of, of that model as we know it? I, I, and I've heard several of my colleagues worrying about this. To be perfectly honest, I think people are preempting what the review is going to do and what it's going to deliver. From my point of view, I welcome this review because it's the first proper review that isn't just looking at the funding, but looking at the way we deliver services. I don't think talking about the way we deliver services means we should all suddenly worry the entire thing's going to be privatised, you know, which I've seen going around on social media. What we've got to do, and you rightly say the NHS this year is 70 years old. From my point of view, all we've done over those 70 years is take the base model and tack things on. We're now in the 21st century and we need to have a service that delivers for people now, not people then. And I think what we need to do is have a proper holistic approach where forget what's happened over the last 70 years and say if you had a blank sheet of paper today and you were designing this newfangled NHS thing, what would you do as services, how would you deliver those services, and then how would you fund those services? And I think the problem's been in the past, the argument has always been reversed. We've started with the funding and said, there's a pot of money, what can we deliver for that? And that's where previous reviews, I think, have gone wrong and failed. And I welcome the Treasury Minister's review because it has made absolutely clear that it will be a review of everything. Now, one thing that was mentioned was patient safety, that that is at the heart of, of healthcare and would have to remain there. When you're reviewing the whole of the structure of the NHS as it is and what healthcare services you deliver, what, where about does patient safety fit in that? Well, patient safety has always got to come first, to be very perfectly frank. You cannot be delivering services that are not safe for people. That is just but you know a bog standard uh, you know no go area you've got to you've got to make sure that patient safety is top priority of anything that you do and anything that you deliver but i think what we do need to do is look at the way strategically we deliver services what services we are delivering and crucially where we're delivering the services as well sometimes it's far too easy to focus on the hospital 
Well, there's more to health than just the hospital. There's also a health strategy in place that the, came in when the chief minister was health minister that stated we should be doing more in the community. And that's something I want to push as well. We shouldn't just be focusing on the acute side of things and dealing with people once they cross that threshold of Nobles Hospital. We should be trying to deliver more to people in their own homes and in their own communities and keeping them there and keeping them out of the hospital in the first place. Now, um, in the previous administration, under the leadership of Howard Quayle as as then Health Minister, there was a five-year strategy launched. Has any progress been made with that? There has been some progress. Um, From my personal point of view, I don't think maybe enough. We are in now year three of that five-year health strategy. I made clear in Tim Ward that from my point of view, although we've got a health review going on, that's not a case of the department sitting back and thinking this review will solve everything and so we don't have to do anything between now and January 2019. The department's own internal improvement programme must and will continue alongside that. Because that's an interesting point. When you're doing such a fundamental review of the health services in the Isle of Man, it's not really a time for radical changes within a department because you could derail the review itself if you start to change things fundamentally that are being reviewed and evaluated. Are you you and your officers going to be treading water for the next year? No, not at all. Like I say, there is a cost improvement programme already underway. There's certain restructuring that has been in the pipeline for quite a while. There's also, as I mentioned, digital strategy and several digital enablers that we are going to continue with. We are not going to sit back and just wait a year and say, oh, well, we've agreed a review in Timwald. That gets the department off the hook. We don't have to do anything. The day-to-day improvement work in the department should be continuing alongside any review, and I've made it absolutely clear that that will be happening. There has been a problem for a while now with staff recruitment and retention in health services. Do you see a way around that? Do you do you have a master plan for, for making the Isle of Man a more attractive place for people in the in the um, you know, I should and... say I should say with recruitment it's not just an Isle of Man problem you look at the UK NHS and they have got serious recruitment problems right across the board if you look at the primary trusts all the way right you know right through the entire system so it's not just a problem that's unique to the Isle of Man but I think in terms of recruitment if you get the health service review right and you get the structure right and you make it somewhere and a health and deliver a health service that has patient care at the forefront of everything we do and you make it a health service that is fit for purpose, then what happens is you naturally solve your recruitment problem because you have people wanting to come here and work. So one problem, fixing one problem can actually sometimes fix another. So I think with recruitment, if we get the review right, and I firmly believe that we will, and then we implement the recommendations of those review and we deliver a health service that is fit for the 21st century and for the people of the island, then you naturally solve your recruitment problem because you have people queuing up to come here to work. Now, the review's due to go to Tinwald in, is it January 2019? So yes. we've got 12 months to wait. Um, presumably then there'll be quite a long period of rolling out any recommendations provided they get approval by uh, the Tinwald Court. What timescale are you looking for fundamental changes within the health services in the Isle of Man? Well, let's not preempt the review and say what those recommendations are going to be. Some of them may be radical fundamental changes. Others might be quite simple things that we can deliver quite easily. And like I say, alongside that, we're still going to be doing the day-to-day improvement programme. We are still going to be looking at not just cost savings, but efficiencies within budgets as well. And the department can get on with that day-to-day. So it's not just a case of let's wait and see and get the review, hope that's going to cure everything and then implement the recommendations. The review is a central piece of work, but the day-to-day will continue. Nine and a half million is an awful lot to claw back from a budget. Um, how are you going to cope with the potential overspend during the next 12 months or or during the next financial year? Well, let's focus on what the overspend actually was because it's not all doom and gloom because some areas of the department came in under budget and some very much under budget. For instance, if you actually look um, at what the overspend's made up of, there was three main areas this year with overspending at Nobles Hospital, which we think is going to be about 11.3 million. 
and that then the transfers of patients to the UK, because obviously we can't deliver everything on Ireland. In some cases, it wouldn't be clinically safe to try and deliver everything on Ireland. That's expected to be 1.1 million more than we budgeted. And the government catering services, of course, 1.3 million as well, which I referred to in my speech. But that has been offset by savings elsewhere. So, for instance, the children's and family services, they, um, they, they came in 952,000 under budget. Adult services, 421,000 under budget. So it's not all bad news. The 9.5, I think we have to look to see where those pressures are coming in and see what we can do this year to try and make sure that it doesn't happen again. I made clear in my speech it is not acceptable for the department year after year after year to be coming back and asking Tinwood for a supplementary vote. Other departments aren't able to do it, so we shouldn't be either. Um, I think there is things that we are already doing that will save and bring that down. For instance, as I say, the digitisation of patient records, which is not just about time saving, but also cost saving. We also are recruiting as well. We have been trying hard to fill the vacancies that we have. We are looking at the way that we deliver services with certain locums, etc. So I think there's lots to be done over the next 12 months. So while it may sound very gloomy, and certainly not the first speech that I wanted to deliver as a minister standing up in Timwall Court and saying, please give me an extra 9.5 million, I, I don't think it's quite as bad as sometimes it can be made out. Yeah.